Before we move to my presentation, I want to show you some pictures which I have uh, shot yesterday night, waiting for Vladimir. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to sit because I don't see very well and I will tell you the story later. Okay, so this is Arpino from my room, uh, one side, and then, so I invite you to look at the city also at night. It is rather beautiful, but I want to show you another picture there, the other angle I don't find, the last one, this one. <coughs> so look, like everywhere in South Italy, this is extremely beautiful. Okay. And I'm proud to have a good camera for doing these things. Okay, I will show you other pictures, but scientific ones, in my presentation. Okay. So, uh, in uh, mechanics, uh, the principle of virtual work has been uh, proven to be a powerful tool for mathematical invention and for metamaterials design. I will tell you what metamaterials are, and I believe that there are many, many interesting uh, mathematical problems which uh, arise in the context of this metamaterial design theory. Uh, I am permanently now at uh, Università di Studi dell'Aquila, but I was professor in Roma La Sapienza and at uh, Università di Napoli Federico II, so I wanted to remind this in my past affiliations. Okay, so uh, I'm happy that the previous speaker uh, started talking about uh, Hellenistic science. In this way, uh, I will not be considered a strange man doing strange things. By the way, somebody said to me that I have a fixation with Hellenistic science because Hellenistic science mainly flourished in South Italy, which was called Megale Hellas, uh, Magna Grecia. Uh, of course, this is true, but we will discuss about perspective, that there are good reasons for that. Mechanica Problemata is an apocryphal text attributed to Aristotle. In it, the principle of virtual work is already applied systematically to predict the functioning of machines. The mathematical formalism on which it is based is the Euclidean geometry, and it is the most ancient example of the unifying capacities of mathematical abstractions in modeling of physical phenomena. The ideas in Mechanica Problemata via the Latin and Arabic translations are later transmitted to Lagrange and Piola. This is a typical um, parabola of the uh, uh, Hellenistic knowledge, which arrived to us via different uh, streams. One is the translation in Arabic language, which via Salamanca uh, in Spain, under Islamic domination, arrived in Europe. Others arrived when Venetians um, conquered Byzantium, took all books from there and transported uh, them in Italy. This is the beginning of Renaissance. Um, but this long process, which I am investigating, but I will not talk about it here in detail, uh, I will, uh, I'm publishing some papers about it. This process of rediscovery of ancient Hellenistic science was completed by uh, Lagrange, and Dalabert, and an Italian mathematician, Gabrio Piola, which by the way is from Pavia, so I have not fixation only with South Italian people. Uh, <laughs> Gabrio Piola uh, was a uh, discover, rediscoverer of the principle of virtual work and invented modern continuum mechanics. So using a variational principle based on, in a particular case, conservative case, on minimum of total energy, or in a more general case, on the principle of virtual work, 
Gabriel Piola uh, developed the uh, modern continuum mechanics. By the way, uh, Green wrote his papers in 1829. Piola wrote a paper in 1822. He introduced the so-called Green deformation tensor. Now, while Greek texts are lost, and one can discuss that maybe Tesibius was not writing clearly, which I disagree, but we'll talk about that. Uh, Italian is a known language. I translated everything written by Piole into English because somebody in the United States told me that everything which is not written in English is not existing. Okay, I tell here because so every French would be very upset for that. Okay. So we can state that uh, the Mechanique Analytique by Lagrange is the next most innovative treatise in the field after Mechanica Problemata. Remark that the work, word mechanics is a calc of the Greek work, word Mechanica. Okay. Remark that in the first version of Lagrange, mechanique is with CH. In Greek, you have ki, which sounds h. Okay, CH. So before in French you lost H, you needed the first edition of Lagrange book. This gives a strong indication of which was the original language used for writing mechanics. Okay? The theory that it presents has been considered to be controversial since its appearance in 1788. Do you know how I found uh, that Lagrange had already started the variational study of continuum mechanics? Because Piola tells at the beginning of his preface, in a note, I want to continue the work by Lagrange, which was stopped by his death, see the note, last note, in the last edition of Mechanic Analytic. It is a set of formulas written one after the others without words, because the curator of the book was simply printing what he had found in the notes of Lagrange. Okay? Uh, now, we can say that the principle of virtual work is a kind of grand unification theory. Uh, in Mechanica Problemata, you have a list of different problems which had been studied in a different way with different techniques, and the order of Mechanica Problemata tells, now I show you how, with a unique principle, you can treat all of them systematically. Okay? Now, Mechanica Problemata is clearly a primary source for D'Alembert. Now, the version of D'Alembert is, a system is in equilibrium, when the total work done by all interactions involving the system is zero for each virtual displacement from equilibrium. Now, this statement puzzles a little bit uh, many engineers, but here we are full of mathematicians. So, I can tell you that if the principle of minimum of energy holds, then the consequent stationary condition implies a particular form of the principle of virtual work. Think about it. How do you establish that something is minimum for an energy? You add a small variation of the candidate minimum, and you calculate the first variation of the energy. So the virtual displacement is nothing else than a small variation of the value of the configuration, in order to estimate the value of the energy, how you do it with a first variation. And then you understand, this is a standard argument, by the way, modernly established by Lagrange. It is a standard argument to say that if you are in a minimum, 
the first variation has to be zero. So giving the imagination, starting from this minimum principle, which is very intuitive, the equilibrium is at the bottom of an energy. We have seen the, how this in the previous lectures. So uh, it is natural if we want to generalize to non-conservative cases to say, OK, I have a work functional. And this work functional is zero in the, in the equilibrium. OK. By the way, in mechanical problemata, you have an exercise. Find the energy with a minimum of energy. Find an equilibrium with a minimum of energy. And then the subsequent exercise is find the minimum, the, the equilibrium, with the principle of virtual work. So it is clear that the man writing it had this connection in mind. It is logically. You know, philologists have a big problem. They don't understand what they are writing, what they are translating. So I found that a Greek text, Mechanica Problemata, which of course I have excluded uh, from my consideration, translated into English, was using for translating iskos, which means force, with different words in different pages. So clearly this man does not know that in mathematics you use for the same concept always the same word. Okay, you, you don't say derivable function and then you change the name every page in your book. It is always a derivable function. Okay. So we can say that the postulation based on the principle of virtual work is more general than that based on the energy minimum. Now Lagrange writes this in a much more general way. I now read for you only bold. If a system is in equilibrium, and if a small movement is imparted to this system, then the sum of the powers multiplied by the distance will be equal to zero. Why am I not reading the other things? Because as Lagrange does not have vector calculus, is not introduced the inner product of a force with a virtual displacement or with a virtual velocity. So it has to describe with words what inner product means. OK. But Lagrange statement can be reformulated even for founding continuum mechanics by using the abstract language of functional analysis and the theory of distribution, which I will try to do later. Now, uh, Thierry, who is the big leader of this meeting, told me you must talk simple things at the beginning and then go to more complicated technical things later, right? He told it to you also. OK, and I'm following the orders. I denied. Yeah, OK. okay. So now, uh, th there is an important nominalistic issue. The word power, as used by Lagrange, means what we call force. OK? Instead, he calls for um, mom moment what we call power. OK? And why, if you read Mechanica Problemata, you understand. Because the word iscos uh, is involved in uh, situations where force is involved. So he claims that he did this following Galileo. I have checked, you know, Galileo wrote in Italian, but I can read it. Whatever is said by Americans. OK. Galileo is uh, considered the best Italian for literature. The clearest Italian form. OK. So uh, there is an important nominal nominalistic issue which every mathematician understands. At the beginning of your book, you write, I mean with power this, I mean with moment that, you read the first page because you cannot jump in a mathematics book, and then you consistently use the word. Okay. Of course, I've read some commentator who tells that Lagrange had confused ideas. He wrote power instead of force. Okay. 
this statement is commented by itself. Although a modern formulation of this principle usually includes the use of concepts from functional analysis, tensor algebra, and calculus, one has to agree on these points. First, Lagrange's formulation seems so general that it includes all the versions that have been formulated so far. I will prove it to you. It uses the minimum possible mathematical concepts. It has only concepts from Euclidean geometry that are sufficiently to rigorously express the principle in its full generality. We have no time here. I have not yet published the paper yet. I believe, and I believe to have proved, that Lagrange was slowly recovering in his historical preface to mechanics the Archita's statement. Okay? Because he uses another one, more advanced, based on analytic geometry. Okay? Now, we have a problem. Uh, uh, modern people always want to say that ancient people are wrong. This is in the human nature. Uh, I'm becoming old, so now I'm on the side of old people. Okay, on the contrary, Trusdell states in 1968 that the Lagrangian mechanics would have a limi very limited scope. On the left, you can read what he wrote about uh, Lagrange. He says that Hamilton Prize of the Mechanique Analytique as a kind of scientific poem was wrong. And he writes it in his Baroque language, which is difficult to understand even for, uh, even for uh, mother language English people. With a Baroque language, he manages also to criticize Hamilton, who had called the Mechanique Analytique a scientific poem. However, we believe that the style of Lagrange is so clear, I'd advise everybody who can read French to read it. It's crystal clear and modern that one can read it profitably also today. It can be considered in many parts to be a modern textbook. Ah, by the way, if French people do not know, I will remind them that Lagrange was Lagrangia, and he was Italian, okay? Uh, Reminds about that, okay? Piedmont, Piedmont. Quasi France. Eh, quasi French. Okay, okay. Okay. Now, I was particularly shocked. Uh, you know, I don't want to tell you too much, but I got the order by uh, my friend Thierry to be more discursive in this part. So, uh, uh, my gen uh, academic genealogy is uh, uh, Lagrange, Brioschi, Beltrami, Levi Civita, Tolotti, Romano, myself. Okay? So if somebody talks, said, says that Lagrange is bad, I am very upset. Okay, that implicitly they are telling that all that I've studied is wrong. And I... No, no. Lag look what uh, 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 Trudel tells about Lagrange. Lagrange's best ideas in mechanics derive from his earliest period when he was studying Euler's papers and had not yet fallen under the personal influence of D'Alembert. Now, first, it is well known that Lagrange sent to Euler the solution of the minimization problem for functionals, and Euler was so kind to tell, okay, we call it Euler-Lagrange, Euler-Lagrange condition, okay? By the way, being a Jesuit, uh, Lagrange had published already his result before sending the letter to Euler because who knows, okay? <laughs> Second, if one trusts Trusdell, Lagrange were a Pinocchio under the influence of the bad boy D'Alembert, okay? Moreover, analytical mechanics induces the belief 
that discrete system and rigid bodies exhaust the universe of mechanical discourse. In 1788, you know, Trussell is not reading the last version of mechanic analytic, the mechanics of deformable bodies, which is inherently not only subtler, but more beautiful and, great and grander, but also far closer to nature than is the rather an arid special case called analytical mechanics, even an Italian would never write that, had been explored only in terms of isolated examples, brilliant but untypical. Unfortunately, most of these fitted into Lagrange's scheme. Everything fits Lagrange's scheme, you should tell to Trusa. Those that did not, he passed over in silence, simply because it, they are not existing. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, to show how Trustel was a, a particular person, this painting was in his dining room. The head is his head, and the naked woman is a realistic wife of Trustel. Uh, this commentary, the last one, shows that Trusdell had not read the last chapter of Mechanic Analytic and the works by Piola, albeit he cites them systematically. So what is the problem? Now, after beyond polemical remarks, which, by the way, our un Greek ancestors are teaching us are very important, because if you rhetorically show something uh, uh, people are more persuaded to give you reason, okay? Now, is the best concept force or work? The best is not the right word. The most fundamental concept to be used for basing the postulation of mechanics is the concept of force or the concept of work. Here I should not teach you what is a... Uh, primitive concept distinguished by defined concept. And I should not teach you that in mathematics, primitive concepts meaning is given by axioms or postulates, okay? So the choice for avoiding Aristotelian regression to infinity in the definition, you need to choose some fundamental concepts and postulate for specifying that meaning some axioms, okay? So which are the, the primitive concepts in mechanics? Trusdell claims that mechanics is to be founded on the concept of force. Trusdell claims, which is even more shocking, that balance laws, and in particular boundary condition, can be induced from experiments. Instead, D'Alembert was persuaded that the most fundamental concept in mechanics has to be played by work. By the way, uh, as I knew that uh, Mario was here present, Mario is checking carefully all my citations, um, starting from mozzarella origin to everything. Uh, I found the Einstein quote, there is never enough experimental evidence that can prove that I'm right, while a single experiment can prove that I'm wrong. However, I could not find the source of this. I like it. It has been attributed to Einstein, but uh, I could not find this edition. Trusdell is a follower of Francis Bacon and Hans Reichenbach, the founder of the Society for Empirical Philosophy. Uh, we have no time here. This is a well-known mistake made by uh, Stoic school uh, uh, in, in uh, late Hellenistic epoch, and this is absolutely and not suitable for describing epistemologically science. In fact, D'Alembert believes that the principle of Victor work must be postulated a priori and its logical consequences are the predictions to be experimentally checked. Nobody can prove the principle of Victor work experimentally. How can you consider every system every possible functional, and every virtual displacement. This is clearly a conceptual structure which following Euclid vision, or Archimedean vision, or Arch Archidas vision, we 
accept, then we check experimentally our theorems, and if our theorems are not falsified, then we say, ah, this principle of Vitorok is a good tool. Okay, by the way, I studied this not only in the Italian school. Uh, you find Landau Lifshitz, the book, um, I think the third volume starts with Lagrangian mechanics and it writes this brilliantly. The force is a derived concept. I'm not telling it is useless. Used during the logical development of the theory, of course very useful in many applications, but without any direct experimental counterpart. According to D'Alembert, the fundamental and unifying idea has to be found in the principle of virtual velocities, later renamed principle of virtual work. By the way, here you see the formulas written with this technique, but this is uh, Cartesian. He writes the components of forces, the components of virtual displacements, and he calculates the first variation of virtual work with this kind of formulas I, I want to show you. The forces inherent to bodies in motions, obscure and metaphysical entities, which are only capable to spread shadows on a science that it is clear by itself. The poor D'Alembert was also fighting against his own truth there. You know, there is a theorem. For every scientific milieu, you find a Truthdelian, even before Truthdelian, okay? I must warn that in order to avoid circumlocutions, I have often made use of the obscure term of force, but I never pretended to attach to this term any other idea except those which result from the principles that I have established, either in this preface or in the first part of this treatise. So if we use the words of uh, D'Alembert, we are happy, we have understood how to solve the problem. Who was the true author of Mechanica Problemata? Of course, you can say, okay, you have a problem, we want to say that somebody from South Italy did it. The true reason is, I want to understand if the first problems in mechanics were solved with balance of force or with, balance, or with the principle of virtual work. Because we do not know how to invent new theorems. We need to learn from our ancestors how they've solved, the, for the first time, a problem to try to repeat what they did. Okay. Archidas of Tarentum. By the way, he was cited many times by Archimedes. You know, Archimedes was a man very full of himself. Okay. As we will see. So if he cites Archidas, we should trust him. His other works are unfortunately all lost. He founded Mechanics on the Principle of Virtual Work, the Suda, the Encyclopedia of Hellenistic Science, tells that Archidas of Tarentum had founded Mechanics on mathematical basis. Okay, later this has been done by Lagrange, Piola, Landau, Feynman, and many, many others. Okay. So Diogenes Laertius tells that Archidas was believed to be the founder of mathematical mechanics, and Luke Plato reproached Archidas for having contaminated geometry with mechanics. So again, this is an old, an old story. Okay, he became also a statesman. So why we are, are we so much interested in understanding how mechanics was first formulated? The answer is to get hints about invention methods of novel theories. Okay, now as we have some time, I want to read with you on the method by Archimedes. The translation is in heat, the work of Archimedes. Uh, the story of this uh, palimpsest is very interesting. You see on the right the picture of the palimpsest. Vertical are the prayers written by a monk in Palestine for fighting against uh, uh, flu. Instead, horizontally, 
you see in transparency the written text by Archimedes. Okay, it starts like that. Archimedes to Eratosthenes, greetings. I send you on a former occasion some of the theorems discovered by me, merely writing out the enunciation and inviting you to discover the proof, which at the moment I did not give. You know, this man was challenging other people. The enunciation of the theorem which I send were as follows. We jump this, I will give you hints about that. The proofs then of these theorems I have written in this book and now I send you. Seeing moreover in you, as I say, an earnest student, a man of considerable eminence in philosophy and an admirer of mathematical inquiry, I thought fit to write out for you and explain in detail in the same book the peculiarity of a certain method by which it will be possible for you to get a start to enable to investigate some of the problems in mathematics by means of mechanics. This procedure is, I am persuaded, no less useful even for the proof of the theorems themselves. For certain things first became clear to me by a mechanical method, although they had to be demonstrated by geometry afterward, because their investigation by the said method did not furnish an actual demonstration. So clearly Archimedes knows there is a difference between mathematics and the physical phenomena is describing. So if something is experimentally proven, this not, does not mean that you have proven it mathematically. But of course it is easier when we have previously acquired by the method some knowledge of the question to supply the proof than it is to find it without any previous knowledge. Okay, so we jump about that. I am myself in the position of having first made the discovery of the theorem now to be published and I deem it necessary to expand the method partly because I have already spoken of it and I do not want to be thought to have uttered vain words but equally because I am persuaded that it will be of no little service to mathematics for I apprehend that some either of my contemporaries or of my successors we are his successors will be my means of the method when once established be able to discover other theorems in addition which have not yet occurred to me okay then it talks about the proof that the integral between a and b of x squared dx is equal to b cubed over 3 minus a cubed over 3 using the modern Riemann sums. And he tells that he conjectured this value seeing a parabola flowing in the water. Okay? Now, what is uh, we learn about that? Archimedes had clear the distinction between mathematical model and physical reality and he knew that no theorem and no postulate can be proven experimentally. Now, is it worth to ponder about this epistemological and historical debate still nowadays? Is mechanics, it is the most ancient among mathematized theories, still fertile of theoretical problems and is it still effective in supplying the needed guidance in technological applications? Okay, falsificationism by Karl Popper is known, but the answer is yes. In fact, one must refrain from the inductivistic belief that laws of physics can be induced from experimental evidence. Do you know the famous chicken, Russell chicken? The chicken was an, a, a serious experimenter. So he extrapolated his observation and he decided that each feeding time was in the morning, every day. Then one day the farmer came and wrung the chicken's neck. This 
inductively justifies the conclusion that induction can justi cannot justify any conclusion. The typical paradoxical uh, statement by Bertrand Russell. Okay, now uh, uh, Paul Germain, uh, uh, everybody in, in France should know, uh, should know uh, him, was a secretaire perpetual de l'Académie des Sciences, but he is an Archimedean spirit because he is the ma man who uh, uh, formulated in modern language using functional analysis the principle of virtual work. So he was a man who could handle sophisticated mathematics and advanced mechanics, but at the same time, he was the leader of Honera group uh, who designed Concord. So proving that you can be uh, both an experimenter and uh, a theoretician. Okay, so we can state that the principle of virtual work remains the most powerful tool to be used to favor scientific creativity and also to push the technological advancement in mechanics. Here we will illustrate this statement by discussing how it is essential in the modern theory of metamaterials or architectured materials. By the way, look at this drawing uh, uh, in the center left high. This is the microstructure of a material with negative Poisson ratio. So uh, there was a big debate in the French school. Can I have a material which under deformation in extension is increasing its transverse section? This is Poisson effect is when the section changes because of elongation. There are auxetic materials which are not changing the section. Then there are positive or negative, or negative uh, Poisson effects. Now, if you look at the microstructure, if you have the mother, microstructure on the left, you pull with the red arrows, you get a striction. On the right side, you pull along the red lines, and you get an extension of the transverse section. But green and uh, um, De Saint-Venin understood this was possible simply using the minimum of energy and proving that a definite positive energy can have Lamé coefficients for which negative Poisson effect is possible. So there is no contradiction with the first principle of thermodynamics with this effect which was later proven uh, only when we had 3D printers uh, experimentally. Okay, uh, the Gore-Tex has negative Poisson effect and it is used in the body of small children to reconstruct arteries so that when it, they grow up, they are pulled and the section increases so the more blood can flow inside. So the philosophical debate about can the first principle of thermodynamics um, be considered valid with negative Poisson effect had a direct impact, not the day after, uh, on technology. Okay, so this we have said already, and this also we have said already. Okay? Now, uh, Graham and Milton and Andrei Cherkayev have proven, and this material has been built, I'm trying to give you some examples about metamaterials, have proven that you can have a fluid solid, or a solid fluid, what it means. This material there, you see, it is standing there, so it is a solid. However, in linearized equations, so for small displacements, it cannot exert shear. So for small deformation, it behaves like a fluid. Okay, and they invented this, they published in 1995, before somebody could print it and prove experimentally. 
So, I want to conclude this first part of my presentation talking about the fundamental problems problem in metamaterial synthesis, which is a serious problem, which needs strong mathematics, and I hope that somebody in the audience will be able to help me in, in this. You know, many years ago I made, uh, I had the delirium of omnipotence, so when I got my tenure, I said, okay, in the, five, in the next five years, I will do this, this, and that. I made a book writing. Unfortunately, it is now 30 years, and I've done only one half <coughs> of it. Okay, so it is clear that I need to persuade somebody young that these things have to be continued. Now, the fundamental problem in the theory of metamaterials consists in the synthesis of materials having some specific physical properties. Now, when talking with a friend of mine, Anil Misra, uh, I, uh, first of all, I never managed to pronounce, I will do it only one time, I will never manage to pronounce paradigm. Uh, you know, it is a Greek word. Paradigm. Okay, so, Paradigm is really uh, uh, crazy. I, I don't know how Americans can manage to do this. So, paradigm shifts is a very frequent war, uh, uh, expression used in, in science. Up to now, what are we doing? We have a physical object, and we look for the model for describing it. Okay, now think about the problem of synthesizing a material having some specific physical properties. How do you tell to your mathematics what is a specific physical property? Okay, and here the principle of virtual world plays a role. You postulate a work functional. So, Instead of having a physical system, and then you look for the work functional suitable for describing it, you change your, your, your viewpoint, you decide, I want a system which is governed by this work functional. And this is a paradigm change in the concept of... Um, in the theory of metamaterials, imposed by the theory of metamaterials uh, design. While up to now one looked for the equations describing a specific already existing material, instead, in metamaterial theories, one chooses the equations mathematically representing the desired behavior, and then looks for the microstructure that, after once homogenized, is at micro level governed by the chosen equations. Now, I need to talk about homogenization. Of course, this is a difficult subject, uh, but I will try to tell you, uh, this is not the technical part about which I want to talk, but here there are many uh, uh, experts in statistical mechanics. But I want to tell you that, unfortunately, uh, I have checked several times talking with experts, there is no theory which up to now can be used to produce theorems leading to a macroscopic solid. Okay? This has been done only for fluids. And I want to study solids. So I will use Piola solution for the problem of identifying macro uh, properties based on micro properties of our system. So, how we want to solve the metamaterial synthesis problem? First, we start choosing the continuum theory describing desired behavior valid at macro level via a judicious choice of macroscopic descriptors and a suitable formulation of the principle of virtual work. 
So what we do, we choose the target macro model. And how do we choose it? With the principle of virtual work. Okay. Second step, we conjecture in a specific class of micro architectures having a multi-scale structure, the subclass which is candidate to be governed by the chosen macro model. So we specify which is the micro, the small scale architecture, which produces at macro level our behavior. Think about the negative Poisson effect. There we have chosen a set of bars with springs and internal pivots. Okay, and then we look in this multi-scale structure, in this microarchitecture, the candidate to be governed by the chosen macro model, then in the we postulate an identification of the macro constitutive equations in terms of suitably parametrized micro properties in the selected subclass of micro architectures by identifying micro virtual work with macro virtual work. Of course, following Archimedes, this is not a geometrical theorem. We conjecture. If our conjecture is good, then we can prove, I don't know, gamma converger theorems or other micro macro homogenization results, proving that our conjecture is true. Uh, this procedure is found in Gabrio Piola works 1845 and Gabrio Piola develops it because he wants to prove that at a macro level you need very general theories and he proves that this demand comes from complex micro structures. Okay, so the I can conclude that uh, the micro macro identification process becomes very difficult if one uses models based on balance of forces and balance of moment of forces. Because balance of force and balance of moment of forces at micro level do not correspond directly to balance of forces and balance of moments at macro level. Okay? Therefore, the conclusions of the epistemological debate give us a powerful tool for conceiving and producing new real world materials. Okay, I, I started a few minutes later, so I show you, I conclude this concept, then I stop. Now, uh, Erringen wrote a book about continuum mechanics in which he introduces many kinematical descriptors. So not only placement, but also micro rotation, micro deformations. He increases the richness of the kinematics at macro level. Unfortunately, he is a follower of Trusdell. So what he's doing? He postulates ad hoc for every kinematic descriptor a new balance law. So he needs to increase the number of post postulates. Occam razor is violated many times with this approach. Instead, Piola, 100 years before Erringen, writes clearly that this identification can be done only if you identify work functional. Okay? Now, at macro level and micro level, one usually needs different sets of kinematical descriptors and therefore different balance postulates. It is very difficult without the a priori knowledge usually given by variational principles to understand which micro balance laws contribute to a certain macro balance law. And I stop with 
telling you a story. I had the pleasure to meet um, Richard Tupin, the co-author of the first volume of Truth, the Continuum Mechanics, in Montreal, two years before he died. And after a two-day discussion, he gave me his hard disk. He sent me his hard disk. It is uh, like, uh, I don't know how to say in English. He gave me the testimony. You know when uh, runners are running and they arrive and they give a stick to the other one who takes it and then starts running. Okay. He told me that he knows for sure that somebody deduced adding and balance laws using a variational principle, then for publishing the paper and make the Trusdellian school happy, postulated the balance laws they had deduced from the principle of Victor work. And himself, for publishing his paper about second gradient materials, was obliged to postulate all other Lagrange conditions before, and then to prove that they are equivalent to the principle of virtual work. Trusdell discovered this after publication, and he kicked him out of the university. Tupin has been an inventor of IBM, and by the way, the moving art disks which were used in our computers for a while are his patent. Okay, so probably he was happy to move away. So I think that it is better that we stop here, and tomorrow I will continue with, with more, more technical uh, questions. Okay, thanks a lot.